have this really deep chamfer on these stools, they're gonna go that way. But my biggest chamfer bit for the router table doesn't even come close. Gets about halfway. And there are ways that you can do this in a stepped motion, but it's kind of a pain. For something this big, I'll actually turn to my table saw. This operation uses a really simple jig, but it is just probably one of the most used jigs in my shop. And it's essentially a circle cutting jig for the table saw. All this jig is, is a piece of MDF with a miter track slider in the bottom that I've just cut out of hardwood. It sits in there perfectly. And it's got a tiny little uh, brad point nail that's been, the head's been cut off, that can sit in any number of holes on this board. Now, what this does, if the blade is standing uh, straight upright, is that brad point bit can sit in the center point of a square that you want to cut into a circle. It sits on there, it pivots on that, on that point and turns its way into the table saw blade and creates a perfect circle. All of these circles were cut using this table saw jig. But I'm also gonna be able to use it to cut those really deep chamfers. I've angled the blade to 45 degrees. I'm using, um, I've moved the pivot point so that I can get that blade interrupting this face at the point that I want it to touch. And that's just a matter of um, lining it up in position there, looking down the line of the blade and seeing where it's gonna intersect that face. And then putting my nail point in, I need a center point drilled in there, that sits on that nail and it spins. So that's gonna give me that really nice clean chamfer the whole way around. With a little bit of sanding, it'll come up beautifully. The first thing I wanna do though, before I show you that really nice smooth chamfer the whole way around, is create a series of faceted chamfers, eight of them, in more of a geometric pattern. I think it's a really cool feature and it's really simple to do. What you'll need to do is make sure your center point is where you want it. And then on the bottom side, you're going to mark your four lines that give you these eight points equally spaced all around the outside. So each one is 45 degrees apart. Make sure that line then comes up the side so you can see it. You're gonna place this piece face down onto that nail. And then you've got a corresponding line out the side here that you can ma match your line on the side of your piece to the line on the jig and you'll do your first cut with that first line meeting the reference then you'll turn it 45 degrees do the second cut 45 degrees etc until you get an eight sided faceted mitre it's a really cool effect one that i would like to use in the future but these particular stools i will then from that process take it and smooth it all out but i think it's a good thing to show you anyway to create this faceted effect, it's really important that you're holding the piece down really firmly. So I've got this armor tool toggle clamp locked onto the board here, and that will really assist me in holding this piece in place. So that created a really nice eight faceted chamfer. You could make that as many sides as you want. It'd just be about those measurements and the lines that you, the marks that you put along the outside. Um, you could also use this method to cut really exact octagons or hexagons. You'd set the blade upright. You'd make sure you're setting the depth. I might do a video on that down the track. But from this point, I don't actually want this faceted uh, feature. I just thought it'd be nice to show you. I'm gonna then turn this into a circle. So I'm gonna remove the clamp. It's actually really handy to do, to use the clamp for this first stage anyway, because to move from that sh the previous shape we had to a fully rounded chamfer, we kind of go through this step anyway to remove those corners. But we're gonna put it back onto the jig and we're going to turn those faces gently into the table saw blade. So you place it back on the pivot point, you bring the whole piece turning gently until it just touches the table saw blade. You do a full rotation to take off all of those corners. You bring the jig a little bit 
further along the table and turn it again, take a little bit more off, just continuously gently turning it into the blade. You need to have a really firm grip of this at all times. Obviously keep your fingers away from the blade. You wanna make sure that the blade is never grabbing so much that it wants to turn this object. If you feel like you cannot hold it down firmly enough, just put your hold fast or your toggle clamp back on it so that there's no risk of it flying. Um, but the, the key is really to go tiny amounts at a time. Once you get the hang of it, you'll really get a feel for how quickly you can move it past that blade. And then you just keep going around until you have a really nice chamfer the whole way around that object. So that's all cut, it's all nice and smooth. I'm just gonna sand around those edges. I want that transition to be a little bit smoother, but it's a great effect. You just can't really get it any other way. You can alter the angle just by altering the angle of the blade. Uh, it's fantastic, really useful. I'm using a general purpose blade um, by Torcata. Great blade, gives me a pretty nice smooth finish. Only a little bit of sanding afterwards for this. And you can pick up that blade at Timbercon. They also have a full range of table saws if you need a whole table saw. But um, just jump on and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos. We've got a whole bunch more. We're gonna follow the life of this stool as it goes through and uh, showing you how to put these nice holes in and all sorts of things like that. So jump on, uh, there's a subscribe button just down below.